Welcome back to Chaos Corner. It's your old buddy, the guardian of chaos, Big Daddy, and I tell it like it is. I'll say that to say this. We are live to tape for show number 11 of Chaos Corner here on my YouTube channel. Fans, I want you to go over to Twitter. I want you to hit my profile link. That will click you over to the Guardian of Chaos YouTube channel. Now, in about two minutes, we're going to leave Twitter and bounce over to YouTube. So follow me, at Big Daddy GOC. And the GOC stands for the Guardian of Chaos. And don't forget, I say it on every show, go over and follow my boys at the show. And that's Mario underscore Chaos. They're there to put you over. Now, fans, there's a lot of news coming out of the world of professional wrestling. I don't want to talk about the regular world and what's going on with all the politics uh, and the outcome of the election and what's been announced. You people and fans and folks and followers and friends have been beaten down enough with all the politics. Let's get on to the Guardian of Chaos and Chaos Corner for show number 11. And we're live! Well, <laughs> We changed that saying. We are live to tape, which means we're taping it live. Is that an oxymoron? And then we're going to post it in the same day. Fans, we're throwing out a lot of content. So what we're going to talk about in show number 11, we're going to talk about AEW full gear. We're going to run down some of the big stories and big news coming out of AEW. Obviously, we have Monday Night Raw, NXT, SmackDown, AEW Dynamite. We're going to do some book reviews, some DVD reviews. And in show number 11, we're going to deep and dive back into the history of pro wrestling. Unbelievable facts. That's what you get here on Chaos Corner. Don't forget to listen to me every Thursday in the 9 p.m. hour. On the Patrick Dino Ryan show with that crazy bastard for Chaos Corner. You're not going to want to miss it. Now, fans, uh, in about 15 seconds, we're jumping off Twitter and we're going over to YouTube. I can't thank you all enough. Stay here for Chaos Corner show number 11. I have a lot of announcements for the content creators out there. I can't thank you all enough. Don't you dare miss it. I'll say that to say this. Welcome over to YouTube, Twitter fans. Show number 11, boy, we're throwing out a lot of content. We have a lot of things going on here at Chaos Corner. We're going to cover AEW Full Gear briefly. We have a lot of stories to go back and dive into history here on show number 11. We have the music going. We have the live crowd. We have hors d'oeuvres. We have food. It's unbelievable what's happening here at Chaos Corner. And as you can see... Wrapped up in chains, as is the all the life right now of the American people, and in particular, the guardian of chaos. You know my background. Behind the walls for 25 years, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here for positivity, inspiration, motivation. Come together if you want. Because we will win in the end. Show number 11, I said that live to tape. That's the new moniker. This will be up today on YouTube. Just to cover some quick news uh, to start the show off before we delve into the books and, and DVDs and, and different history, I have some unbelievable this year, 2020, in history that's going to rock your world. I have dates. I have matches. I have locations. This will be a history edition of Chaos Corner. But to start off with AEW Full Gear, Omega and Page was a fantastic match. I, I really have to say that. Mox and Kingston was an unbelievable match. I didn't think Kingston would tap out, but he did. Now listen, I know I'm a couple of days after Full Gear. This has sunk in over the weekend. It's the beginning of a new week. We have a lot going on. I am stunned to say that all my predictions were wrong, with the exception of Moxley defeating Kingston. I, I hit that one dead balls on. FTR with Tully Blanchard in the tag team titles against the Young Bucks. A tremendous match. I saw FTR do a lot of moves. I didn't think they would be able to do or they would try. But your new AEW tag team champions are the Jackson Boys. The Young Bucks in an unbelievable matchup. If you get a chance to go back and watch Full Gear, because you know on show number 10, I covered uh, AEW Dynamite. Show 6 before that, we, we recapped AEW Dynamite, all leading into Full Gear. The Matt Hardy-Sammy Guevara match, the Elite Deletion match on the Hardy compound, was also a very... Uh, 
done artistically. I'm not saying it was truly a cinematic match. It's, it's the typical matches that Hardy has had at the compound, but unbelievable. Matt Hardy could be one of the smartest men, a genius in the world of professional wrestling. That's just my opinion. Again, I, the Young Bucks are the tag team champions. Uh, I know I jumped back and forth. I'm still looking at my notes, and I still can't believe that happened. Also, in another huge, stunning event that I said on Busted Open Radio with Mark Henry for Sirius XM, that's where I made my predictions. And <laughs> I was wrong on three out of four, four out of five, which leads me into, you know what Bully Ray said to me 20 years ago? At least a couple of times. And while we were going for the NWA World Tag Team titles with the Outcast Killers, he said, give the Guardian of Chaos five spots and he'll screw up four of them. I consider that to be a compliment. But again, uh, tag team wrestling, if anyone knows that, it, it, it's Bubba Ray Dudley, Bully Ray Dudley, if you will. Uh, so I made those predictions with Mark Henry on Busted Open. And here's another one that I'm stunned at. I, I didn't think this would happen. I thought it was too soon. But Cody who has now got his name back, Cody Rhodes. Thank the Lord for that because he is Rhodes. So Cody Rhodes and Darby Allen for the TNT title. Darby Allen's your new TNT championship uh, champion. Who saw that coming? I didn't see it coming. Uh, Orange Cassidy and, and Silver from the Dark World Order. Uh, Silver's a, a hell of an athlete, uh, that, that, that was a decent match. Orange Cassidy obviously is over. I couldn't imagine if the fans were there. Uh, the buy-in match, Serena Deeb uh, defended her NWA title against Allison Kay, who said she left the NWA. And it's starting to look to me because uh, uh, Sheeta and Nyla Rose went for the title. Sheeta's still your champion. The NWA Women's World title becoming as important as the AEW title because they're neglecting the women's uh, title altogether, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. It's just where I'm coming from here on show number 11. So I, that's why I wanted to start off this way before we get into the deep uh, uh, history of pro wrestling uh, that's happening this year. Uh, a lot of dates. So overall, full gear, I'll give it an 8 out of 10, maybe even a 9 uh, compared to this modern day wrestling. It was perhaps their best pay-per-view of the year. Again, Omega and Page, a great match. Mox, the... Uh, uh, Defends the title, keeps the title in an I quit match. I don't know where they're going to go with Eddie Kingston from there. Uh, FTR loses the tag titles to the Young Bucks. We already talked about Sheeta and Rose. Uh, Matt Hardy and Guevara at the Hardy compound. Cody loses the title in a major upset to Darby Allin. Uh, Jericho and MJF is what I saved for last. We talked about Orange Cassidy and John Silver uh, and Serena Deeb and Allison Kay. I, I wanted to talk about this last, last the Jericho MJF. Uh, inner circle angle. Where do you go from here? In my opinion, this is, let, let me lower this a little bit. In my opinion, what I saw at Full Gear, they didn't use MJF to his potential. Now, I originally liked the storyline. I liked the whole Frank Sinatra thing. I guess it was MJF's idea. A lot of people giving a lot of uh, heat and crap to Jericho, but it was actually MJF who came up with that whole uh, Vegas chorus line at the steak dinner. That that's what my sources say. And you know I have so many sources. I have to actually outsource my sources. So that that that's what I hear. And now they didn't really mesh at full gear. Two great grapplers. Uh, you know Jericho is fifty or fifty one maybe uh, today. So uh, shout out to Chris Jericho uh, against a twenty four year old MJF. And it just didn't flow like I thought it would. You saw some hesitation in the match. Once you see that, it gives people some doubt. I'm not sure where they were going with the story. But now that it, he's in the inner circle because MJF won, which uh, you can't be surprised by that outcome, where does it lead to from here? Where does the story go from here? Again, I noticed uh, uh, MJF maybe took a little of his luster off his character and gimmick, in my opinion. I've been in this business over 30 years, 35 years. I'm a two-time Hall of Famer. I I've scouted everybody from the Orient to the Pac Rim to Hawaii uh, to here in the United States of America to Puerto Rico to Mexico. I mean, it doesn't matter. That's what I noticed. Uh, now, listen, I'm not saying it was a debacle. That's that's what I see from, from, from MJF and Jericho. Now, I don't know where he goes from here. Did he need to join the inner circle? I'm just saying. 
So 10 minutes in, we, we got everybody in here on show number 11 for Chaos Corner, live to tape. A lot of things going on in the country, a lot of things going on in pro wrestling and WWE, uh, AEW full gear. So we covered pretty much that briefly. I didn't say I was going to break it down. I didn't want to leave it on that as the chains are falling off me here at Chaos Corner. Because that's how I'm feeling leading into the holidays in 2021. That's right. You can no longer keep the Guardian of Chaos and Chaos Corner wrapped in chains. You can't. It's my life. I get it. Behind, I understand. It's all of our lives at this point, but you're not going to keep us there forever. Just remember that. Great show. Full gear. AEW. Again, MLW announcements coming back. Impact. The whole nine yards. We have a lot of things going on. Uh, next, I'll quickly and briefly break down... Uh, Coming up December 19th, uh, Jingle Brawl 2020. Uh, it will be at the Daytona Beach Ocean Center. There's going to be a lot of stars there. Uh, the NAWA and the Godfather, Tony Capone, are back with a vengeance. Professional wrestling the way it should be. I'll give them a lot of credit. It's been announced in Pro Wrestling Insider. There's a lot of stuff on social media. There's going to be a lot of stars down there in Daytona Beach on December 19th for Jingle Brawl 2020. Uh, add in that the heavyweight championship will be involved in the Hercules Hernandez Cup, the 15-man uh, Battle Royal Rumble, but you have to have a pin to win the title. That's going to be a sight to behold. It's going to be a bonanza extravaganza, as I said on show number 10. So what the godfather Tony Capone is doing and hooking up with Fight, that's right, iPay-Per-View, Fight, Fight TV, it will be broadcast on December 19th. So Tony Capone, the owner and CEO, is doing what he said he was going to do. December 19th, Jingle Brawl 2020, all the titles will be on the line. All the stars will be there. It will be in the Sunshine State at Daytona at the Ocean Center. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster. Florida's wide open. The hell with COVID. Uh, they're all safe. I, I, that's what they're saying. That's what they're reporting. I don't want to get too political here. And, so December 19th, I pay per view, Fight TV. Jingle Brawl 2020, the North American Wrestling Alliance, the Hercules Cup, Bruiser Brody's uh, a widow's going to be there, Barbara Goodish, uh, Hercules Hernandez uh, family, the Fernandez family will be there in a red carpet affair. You're, they're bringing in Showtime, Marcel Williams, uh, The House of Pain, The Dirty Blondes, Chase Stevens, The Tokyo Monster, Cahagas. They're bringing in the legendary Samoan Dynasty members, L.A. Smooth, Afa Anawai Jr. They just signed, who was re, uh, left MLW, and, and, and the second and third generation grapplers from the Samoan Dynasty, as I said, to now Harry Davy Boy Jr. Smith will be at Jingle Brawl. You're you're not going to want to miss the Slambinos. Talk about watching a movie between a Bronx Tale and Goodfellas. These guys are no one to be trifled with. They're mobile, agile, hostile, and nimbile. And that would be the Slambinos. They will be in Daytona Beach. Also, you just saw him on AEW Full Gear, and I got a feeling he'll be back there again soon. WWE alumni from The Brood, and that would be Gangrel, who lives in the Sunshine State, who has a school in the Sunshine, Sunshine State, uh, a pro wrestling school, and I believe maybe even runs shows. But Gangrel, who I considered uh, one of the best gimmicks for the day when he was with Edge and Christian, he will be at jingle brawl for the north american wrestling alliance you're not going to want to miss that one and again he was just on aew full gear also coming back would be the blood hunter the blood beast the blood monster the blood warrior whatever you want to call him hannibal uh, the nawa is hooked up as i said in the previous episode with great North Wrestling out of Canada and Devin Nicholson, Hannibal and Hannibal TV, unbelievable and the bloodthirsty blood monster blood warrior will be in Daytona Beach with the legendary madman, the taskmaster himself, Kevin Sullivan 
will be in Daytona. So those are all the stars and plenty of more to be announced. Uh, I believe in the female roster, uh, Amber Nova was just signed. You do know that the female talent of relations is the legendary Cindy Snow. There is none better. Uh, 30 years in the business and man, she's easy on the eyes. Don't forget the front office of Mario Mancini, Paul Roma, Lou Reardon, uh, that goofball manager who I hear every week on, on his podcast, Chaz Moretti. Uh, I don't know. He sounds like he's got the brain of a dehydrated BB. And in, in my, I'm just telling you from what I'm, I'm hearing. You know, there's a lot of guys in there in the front office and who do you're associated with the NAWA. I am the commissioner, but we don't know uh, going forward what the rulings are going to be or even what role I'm going to play. And that's just the truth because I am the guardian of chaos and I tell it like it is. Uh, so uh, while I still have ruling power, kind of like the president of the United States, who's still president until January 20th or January 21st on the inaugural day, okay, no matter what happens with the election, and again, I don't care who, who you voted for, whether it was Biden or Trump, I don't believe in any of that, Republican, Democrat, I'm an independent thinker, and, and you can keep that to yourself or let me know about it, and either way, like I've said on these previous episodes, I don't really care, but I'm just comparing to the similar, similar situation until December 21st at Jingle Brawl. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> December 19th. I'll refer back to the earlier Bully Ray comment. Until Jingle Brawl 2020 in Daytona at the Beach Center, the Oceanfront Center, the Daytona Beach Center. I am the North American Wrestling Alliance Commissioner. I took over in the legendary Slam Jam Tour in 99, which led into the 2000s. I took over for Bruno San Martino, appointed commissioner by the godfather, Tony Capone. So until that is taken away from me or I'm dismissed or, or, or there's some sort of legalities or formalities going on, I am the commissioner of the North American Wrestling Alliance. So say and do whatever you want down in sunny Florida, whether I'm there or not there, it doesn't really matter. I still hold the gavel and still have the power until it's taken away from me. So I hope you're watching it and listening. Uh, 17 minutes here and show number 11 for Chaos Corner. And yeah, I've gone back, Capone. I've gone back, Godfather, with all due respect. I've watched your Wrestle Connection shows on YouTube and uh, you and uh, uh, your boy there, uh, uh, Don Apollo, and all the different guests. And I saw my good buddy on there. Boy, he was something. The Condor, he was really something from the mountains of the Andes. I've seen everybody on there. I saw you toss that preliminary uh, uh, guy, bum. He's, he's not a bum, and I defended him for years. But we'll say it for Tony Capone's purposes. And you took him, got man seen, and you threw him over the top rope. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what somebody said. Uh, I saw all that. So don't think I'm not watching, not listening, whether it's with Dr. John and Papa Stroh. And again, uh, the man with the brain of a dehydrated BB, Chaz Moretti, uh, on, on, on the podcast. Although I will say one thing, Papa Stroh, one smart man. I've been watching you, Papa Stroh. I'll give you a lot of credit. You're a legend in this business. And I... He was something to maestro you know, back in the days of WCW. So as I'm rambling on here, and of course, uh, uh, let me go from that section of the NAWA and all the big things going there from your commissioner. So fans, December 19th, Jingle Brawl 2020. I'm rambling on here. Uh, the Godfather, Tony Capone, you're not going to want to miss it. Don't you dare miss it. All these promos and shows like that. Have you ever seen any of them on the NAWA YouTube site? or the NAWA website, or any of the NAWA social media? Have you seen any of that? Any of Chaos Corner? Any of the old photos, videos from the, from the past? Have you seen any of that? I did see one beautiful tribute back in early October where it said from Big Daddy to Bruno with an excellent picture of Bruno San Martino in the, in the NW, NAWA World Heavyweight title with the logo in the background and the Guardian of Chaos right next to there. It was a beautiful photo. And then, of course, Bruno and I shaking hands at Slam Jam at the Westchester County Center, which nobody remembers. Everybody forgets. We all forgot about history for a group that's got history. But anyway, neither here nor there. I'm just throwing it out there, and I'm glad people are listening because this is what I do. I am the guardian of chaos, and I tell it like it is, and I beat to my own drum, and this is how I love it, and this is how I do it, and I love I mean, what was that movie? 
ELE with Will, Will Ferrell and Woody Harrelson, uh, The Tropics, <laughs> the basketball movie, ELE, baby. Everybody love everybody. What do we need more than now? What, what, what do we need? ELE, baby. Everybody love everybody. <laughs> We're 20 minutes in here. Again, I'm not going to go uh, more than 40 or 45 minutes. I've been looking at all the analytics, trying to get my subscribers up so I can live stream. Again, like, subscribe. I appreciate it. It's a work, baby. Come on, it's a work. Hey, fame, man. It's still alive. Like, subscribe, spread the word. We have a lot of fun here. I drop a couple of shows a week, plus the classic clips. You know that I'm on Twitter. Uh, I, I am on Facebook, but I'm getting off all that stuff. You want to follow the Guardian of Chaos. You can follow me on Twitter because that's where I do my branding and far-reaching and a lot of influential people, people that I love on Twitter. The Twitter community has been great to me, although the censorship is BS, as we know. But I'm on Gab, Guardian of Chaos on Gab. Go get the app at Gab. Go to Parlor. I'm also as the Guardian of Chaos. Who else would I be? The GOC Big Daddy, because I tell it like it is. I'll say that to say this. So I'm on Gab. I'm, I'm oh, look at that. The light even comes on. That's why I love solar. Again, I say it every episode down here. We don't get a lot of reception. That's why we're still working on things. We're still upgrading. We're still doing things. And stay tuned. As long as you're getting content and you're entertained is what it's all about. But back to my social media platforms. You know, I'm on Twitter, barely on Facebook, and that's so I can watch Avi Klein and wrestling with anything but. And if you're not watching and listening to that podcast and following them on Twitter and on Facebook and on Twitch, WWAB, wrestling with anything but, you've lost your mind. Uh, that simple. Uh, Avi Klein is the host. He has uh, 10 shows a week, uh, seven days a week. Uh, everything from wrestling with anything but. So they talk pro wrestling, but they also talk life, politics, uh, everything in between. Monday, it's with former WCW star Glacier Ray Lloyd. Okay? Tuesday, it's with former WCW WWE star Hugh Morris, a.k.a. Bill DeMott. And of course, support the Carrie Ann DeMott Foundation for Bill's daughter. Wednesdays. It's Pretty Paul Roma from Power and Glory, Pretty Wonderful, the Four Horsemen, president of the NAWA and head trainer at Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. Thursdays, it's WWE Hall of Famer, the magnificent one, the original rock, the rock, Don Morocco. Friday, it's with Mike Duke the Dumpster Drossy in Road to Recovery. Unbelievable. Uh, Duke is an excellent guy, very engaging personality of, of an unbelievable guy. He does a lot to help a lot of people. Sundays is with the Patriot Del Wilkes, Unmasking the Truth. You won't find a show like that anywhere else. Del Wilkes, we know him from WCW, WWE, the Patriot, the All-American. Football in South Carolina was unbelievable All-American. Uh, he's a true Patriot. His time at All Japan. Yeah, I did pretty good there. So unbelievable. He's on Sunday nights with Unmasking the Truth. Uh, and then, of course, Saturday, late, late night uh, for all you insomniacs, partiers, whatever you want to say, there's the Green Room. Now, Avi Klein hosts all these. Okay, on the Green Room, Avi Klein is looking for a host that's been unbelievable. He's choosing between David Holliday, Mickey Doyle, Adam Sentif, Howard Collado, and of course himself, Avi Klein. So they're on for a couple of hours on a late Saturday night. The Green Room, you don't want to miss it. Wrestling with Anything But uh, podcast. Let me get some music in here. And then like I said, as I break down and I do this, I'm not being distracted. Show number 11. Hit like, smash. Let's get that algorithm going. Chaos Corner. Let's see what we got. So again, Mondays, Breaking the Ice. Tuesdays, face value. Wednesdays, maintaining the truth. 